Hello and welcome to the Candlelight Podcast where I, Mohamed Abdullah, talk about different topics including some of my favorites which are movies, martial arts, and philosophy. Let's start with this week's quote. So, what we have right here is a quote from the great Mike Tyson. If you're not humble in this world, then the world will throw humbleness upon you. Straightforward. So if you're not humble in this world, if you do not humble yourself, the world will, will force you to be humble. It will throw humbleness up, uh, upon you. And the reason I chose this quote, this quote for today's episode is because of the events that unfold uh, basically earlier in the week. It's that Connor fought Dustin Poirier at the main event of UFC 264. And man, was it something to see. Let's, before we get into all of that, before we get into all of that with Connor and Poirier and what happened, let's just, actually, it's funny. Let's start, we're starting with the MMA news in the beginning of the podcast this time. Let's start with the prelims and what happened there, you know, because we're going to dissect some of it and see what fights were awesome, what fights were enjoyable and all that stuff. So we got the uh, Ryan Hall versus Ilya Taporia fight. Ryan Hall, well, well known as the most avoided man in the featherweight division, gets knocked out in the first round by the undefeated prospect Ilya Taporia. So, what does that mean for Ryan Hall? Well, just watching his performance, you know, just watching his performance, the way he kind of fought, he didn't really fight, he, he engaged, but not really. All he did was repeat the same move over and over again, trying to get a, a different result. He's just, you know, going for that weird, awkward takedown that he can pull off. He did pull off, I think, once at least in the fight, but... He just kept doing the same move over and over again for the for the entire round. And once Ilya got a read on it, knocked him out. Was able to catch him and knock him out on the ground. Finish him off. It's so weird. Because you know, Ryan Hall is skilled in jiu-jitsu, but his you know, he's not doing you know, it's it just shows that what he has is not enough to compete at the high level of you know MMA. So, this is at least what this fight shows. It was a dangerous fight for him to take, but he took it. And man, it just kind of shows that what he has was not enough. It was so weird. He just used the same move over and over again. It was, it was a bit bizarre. I don't know why he didn't just go for a different kind of takedown or, you know, set it up even better. He just kind of went for it over and over. It was weird. And then, okay, so that's it for that fight. The fight after that is Nico Price versus Michael Michel Pejera. A, we, a fight that uh, is exciting is obviously, you know, got this, you know, uh, got this, you know, hype behind it because, you know, these two fight, uh, fighters are gen generally exciting. Uh, for some reason, I didn't watch this fight, actually. Uh, I just kind of skipped it because, you know, I was, yeah, because uh, I was actually watching the Copa America. I think that's what I was doing. I was watching the Copa America where Messi got the, uh, <laughs> the um, what's it called? The what you might call it? The got the cup, Copa America. <laughs> he won, and I was watching that instead of this fight. And then I kind of came back to the UFC, watching uh, Carlos Condit, Carlos Condit versus Max Griffin. Oh, by the way, Ryan Hall and Ilya Tapora. I actually watched it later on because I was watching the football match at that time. So I got back from the football match at during Carlos Condit versus Max Griffin. Interesting fight, but you know Max won, and that was that basically. And then I left the house, left my house to go to my friend's house to watch the main card where Burns and Wonderboy and Connor and Poirier are all fighting. So I reached his house after the O'Malley fight because now we're in the main, main card. Uh, the O'Malley fight happened at the beginning and then the women's fight and then the heavyweight fight and then the co-main and main event. I reached around, yeah, I reached around the heavyweight fight. As soon as we opened, as soon as we opened the... Uh, the computer and the TV to watch the fight at his house, it was like five seconds before the knockout. And it was, you know, uh, Greg Hardy, you know, punching Ty and Ty getting stumbly and, uh, you know, almost getting knocked out. But then Ty just comes back with a boom, not even a punch like this. No, it was more of a punch like that, you know, and knocks Greg Hardy down and then finishes him off. Great. It was, it was really cool to see, but wasn't cool to see was that afterwards, Tai Tuivasa celebrated by drinking out of a shoe. Just drinking out of a shoe. Disgusting. I have no idea why he does it, but hey, you know, he does it. 
Uh, it was fun, I guess. Disgusting. <laughs> anyway, and after that, so after that fight, as we were fi- uh, waiting for the, uh, you know, welterweight co-main to start, we watched, uh, I believe this is how it was. We finished the fight of Tai to Vasa, and then as we were waiting for the co-main to start, we were watching, I rewatched the, sh- I watched the Sean O'Malley fight, which I didn't watch because I was on my way to my friend's house uh, from Sharjah to Dubai. So, I kind of missed it, but hey, once I got there, we watched it. He watched it again so that he, so that I could watch it, and yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. <coughs> Ooh, alhamdulillah. <coughs> alhamdulillah. Sorry about that. But as, seeing as this is, you know, um, you know, an, a, just a one-take thing, I'm not going to cut it out. I'm just going to keep it in. Unless it was something, like, significant that I need to cut out, I won't do it. So excuse me for keeping the sneezes in. So, moving on. So uh, we watched the Islam, not the Islam fight, um, the uh, Mac- uh, the O'Malley fight, and he actually had a change in opponents. He, he was supposed to fight some other guy called Luis, Luis Molka, who apparently wasn't a, you know, a rank guy, so people were like, oh, come on, give him a real fight, give him a top 15 fight, let him fight someone who's ranked, someone who's talented, someone who's skilled, but no. He was going to fight Luis Malka. But then there was a change in opponents because Luis couldn't make it. And they went through a few different, uh, you know, options of who he could fight. And then he landed on Chris Moutinho. Chris Moutinho, uh, Portuguese Ameri- uh, Portuguese American guy. He's, uh, you know, he's not, you know, the most skilled fighter. But hey, you know, that's who they could get for the bantamweight and fight for the... That's who they could get. They can make quit and fight. And honestly, we were, as I was expecting, as we were all expecting to, for O'Malley to just run through him, just, you know, completely run through him, TKO him. That's not exactly what happened. What happened was Chris Moutinho pushed the pace as soon as the bell rang and he just kept getting into all, uh, onto O'Malley's face, not, not backing down. O'Malley just threw everything at him, apart from the kitchen sink. He's just like throwing, you know, one twos, lefts, rights, uppercuts, and you know, head kicks and whatever he could throw. But the guy just wouldn't back down. He wouldn't yeah. He wouldn't be stopped. Chris Martinez just kept pushing forward, pushing the pace. I didn't expect that from Chris Martinez. I was expecting okay, uh, as soon as they saw he was pushing the pace, I was like, okay, he he's coming on in on short notice. He probably has only one or two rounds worth of cardio, worth of stamina. He just wants to see what he can do, you know. Uh, just try his luck and push the pace, try to get something going, you know, maybe knock him out. But no, he just kept on pushing the same pace for like three whole rounds. And this was disappointing. The last 30 seconds of the fight, it's just 30 seconds more. And he's been being, uh, Chris is being beaten up the whole round, not really landing anything on O'Malley. O'Malley has some good head movement. He's being beaten up because he's just going forward, marching forward without any head movement himself. And the ref just felt like he saw enough and stopped the fight. Herb Dean, for some reason, decided to stop the fight, even though there was a p- less than 30 seconds left on, th- on the third round, and it would have went to a decision. I don't know why you robbed Chris of his chance to get to a decision. I mean, obviously he's going to lose, but let him at least see the end of the fight, see the bell. He fought for three rounds. He kept pushing on forward, not backing down, let him see the final bell. Why did you stop it when it was, there was less than 30 seconds left? Now, granted, people would say he was taking a lot of punishment and uh, he shouldn't have taken any more punishment. I, and honestly, I'd agree. But why didn't he stop it earlier then? Why did he have to stop it at the very, very end of the round? Let him see the end ending bell. Let him go to a decision. He deserves at least that for taking the amount of punishment he did. And he was standing, by the way. He wasn't like on his back trying to defend. No, he was standing. But, and it wasn't like the same as Gaethje and Ferguson. When Gaethje was fighting Ferguson, it was five rounds of beating, of a beating. And Ferguson was backing away. He couldn't fight anymore. And Herb stepped in and stopped it perfectly. Now, it's just, you know, this was just a bad stoppage. It was, it was disrespectful to Chris. He should have been able to see the final bell. And um, yeah, it was just a dumb stoppage that, you know, robbed him of the chance of getting to a decision. When it was only 30 seconds left. If it was like, you know, more than a minute, I'd understand. But less than 30 seconds? Come on. 
He's done it. He's what more damage can he take? Just let him go to the final, you know, final bell. I don't know, but you know, Herb Dean has some uh, sketchy roughing this uh, card, and this is not the end uh, of my criticisms of him for this card. Check this out. So for the women's fight, skipped it, didn't even watch it. I don't watch women's fights. And then for Gilbert Burns versus Stephen Thompson, I was surprised to see that this fight is not a five rounder. It's actually a three round fight. I don't know why, because you know, these guys are in the top five, essentially, they're gonna fight for a title. Whoever wins fights for the title. Uh, not really, if Steven wins, he fights for a title. If Gil Gilbert wins, uh, he doesn't yet. Um, he has to fight one more fight, it seems. But, you know, make it a five round fight because these guys are in title contention. You know, they're, they're contenders, they wanna fight for the title, let them feel all five rounds. And um, yeah, the fight went as, you know, as expected, kind of. I really was hoping Wonder Boy, uh, for Wonder Boy to win, I was rooting for him. But, you know, Gilbert was able to uh, wrestle him to a decision win. So basically what Gilbert did is kind of like the, you know, the classic lay and pray where you, uh, where you just, you know, you just kind of grab your opponent, try to take him down and then just act as a wet blanket, holding them down, not really doing anything. Just, you know, you're there, you're in control, you're in, you're getting ground control time, you're getting the points, but you're not really doing anything. You're just holding him down on the ground. And obviously we know as soon as uh, uh, Gilbert completes the takedown, it's gonna be almost impossible for Steven to stand back up because Gilbert is just so accomplished as a grappler. He's a black belt in Jiu Jitsu, very accomplished. And Steven is more of a striker as we all know. So I don't think he would be, I didn't think he would be able to get up and I was right. So as soon as Gilbert just got him in the first round, took him down, stayed on him, won the round. And then second round comes along and Steven actually wins the round by, you know, you know, actually uh, punching and hitting and uh, doing something to actually earn the round. And then the third round came along and uh, Gilbert just did what he did in the first, grabbed him, was able to take him down and just, st you know, laid on him. That's it. And then he won the fight, 29-28, uh, just the scorecards. Uh, I think one judge gave it 30-27 to uh, Gilbert, which is kind of, you know, which is kind of wrong because Stephen did win that second round. But anyway, hey. It wasn't a very impressive, um, you know, impressive uh, performance by Gilbert. And uh, I was expecting a bit more from Wonder Boy, honestly. But hey, there you go. And even Dana was, he disliked the performance. He didn't like what Gilbert did at all, even though he did what he had to do to win. If this is how he could win, then do it. You know, why not? But Dana was impressed. I'm not impressed, but I understand. Uh, and that's why uh, Colby Covington is probably getting the, you know, welterweight title shot before Leon and before Gilbert as well. Mm, so that's what you have for that. And then we get to the main event. Conor McGregor versus Dustin the Diamond Poirier. Man, where to start with this one? Well, I guess we should start with how we started the episode with the quote. If you're not humble in this world then the world will throw humbleness upon you. So, this fight doesn't start in the octagon. It starts a few days prior in the uh, press conference. Because, as I told you guys, I believe I mentioned this last week, Connor went into the press, press conference, you know, just trying to recapture the magic that was old Connor, I guess. He was just trying to, you know, trying to get into Dustin's head, say as many, you know, edgy remarks as he could, you know, to grab, to get those headlines and to, you know, make sure the viewers are interested and all that stuff. But it was falling flat. Even Dustin pointed it out, he used to be better than that. He was just trying, he was trying hard, you know, but it didn't work. But Dustin was on face completely. So they went into the fight. Connor being his, you know, kind of like uh, uh, his, uh, you know, kind of, I don't want to say anything bad, but his former self, you know, former self as if he was ever not that person, you know, I'm pretty sure, as I kind of called it, I knew the uh, nice Connor face was a bit of an act to save face and uh, make sure that people like him again after what he did to, after he kind of, you know, lost to Habib, 
and then go on to do some really controversial things, really wrong things, like punching the guy in the bar and breaking a fan's phone. So, stealing and breaking a fan's phone. So, yeah, he needed to save face, so he turned nice, and now he's turned back into heel after he's been knocked out by Poirier in the beginning of the year, which is weird. Uh, and that was... I immediately thought, no, this is not the way to go. The He should have not done interviews. He should have not done... You know, much press except for the press conference, the one press conference itself, and he should just save that after the fight where he may have beaten Poirier, and then he could talk all the trash that he wanted. But would make more sense that way at least, even though it's not a good thing to do. You know, talking the trash that Connor kind of likes to do the way he does, and uh, yeah. So they start. They went into the fight. Dustin just you know calm as ever. And then Connor trying to, you know, rile himself up and stuff. And as soon as the fight started, they just went at it. And Connor started to spam leg kicks now. And as soon as they saw that, I was like, huh, Poirier is that good at MMA. He's that smart. Because he said in an interview before the fight that I'm expecting Connor to throw leg kicks now and even head kicks. And that's exactly what Connor did. Connor threw head kicks and leg kicks hard, trying to, you know, do damage. Uh, you know, to uh, he's trying to do do too. He's trying to do too much damage in such a little amount of time, in a very inefficient way. He's trying to take uh, Poirier out in the beginning, but hey, what what ended up happening was that uh, oh, by the way, Connor kept saying before the fight that Dustin's gonna leave on the stre- on a stretcher. He's gonna be dead. He's uh, got, uh, the first one to shoot. You know, for a takedown. You know, first one to shoot and initiate the grappling. He's you know. Kind of like, uh, you know, a bad word, obviously, he says. But he's like the loser of this, basically. And uh, so what ended up happening was Poirier pressured Connor back. And then Connor shoots in, kind of like shoots and starts to grapple. And he kind of clinches with Poirier and tries to pull a guillotine choke, which is the weirdest thing. Why did Connor McGregor try to pull a guillotine choke on Poirier? Which Poirier got out of. And then he just kind of mauled Connor in the ground. You know, he was in, in Connor's guard, but then he started to just wail on him. He basically habibed Connor. He just th- did what Habib did, you know, just punch ground and pound, ground and pound, ground and pound until the end of the round, until the bell. Oh, this is actually weird. No, he was actually ground, ground and pounding, and Connor was actually fi- uh, hooking his glove to keep, to pull him down so that he can fire back some shots. And Poirier completed the ref, Herb Dean this time. Checks out. And Herb Dean, for some reason, he stops it, lets him back up, and before that he before he does before he even says, you know, go, Connor starts to hit the Poirier when he's in front of him. And what's weird is that, come on, Herb, you said stop, enforce the stoppage. You know, stop like you know, stand back up and then continue. But he doesn't, he's just like, uh, uh and then just kind of lets the you know fight go on. It was just awkward. Weird roughing, and that's not even the worst part of uh, what Herb Dean did that fight. What happened was, as they were exchanging, Connor was knocked down, and then as Poirier was going for the finish, it was a good five seconds, at least five seconds of you know uh, Poirier hitting Connor, and Connor's just not defending himself intelligently, and that's obviously that calls for a stoppage. But Herb is just sitting there, you know, doing his taxes in his head. Trying, I don't know what he was doing, but he was just not doing his job and stopping the fight. Why didn't Herb stop it before the bell before the bell rang? The bell rang and Connor was being beat up, and Herb was just sitting there like, huh? I wonder if I left the stove on at home, something like that. And just then the first round ended, and Dustin was going back to his corner, but Connor seemingly did not was not able to get up. What was going on? Connor was just sitting on the ground, you know, not getting up, holding his feet. And just like yelling in pain. And then Herb uh, decided to get the doctor in. And it turns out that Connor broke his shin. Connor broke his, not like mid shin, no, uh, shin and his ankle. You know, the closest part to, the, to his ankle, he kind of broke it. And turns out, and, and then Herb Dean just stops it. Doctor, you know, not really a doctor stoppage, more of a TKO, you know, kind of thing. But it was weird. So... The fight ended then and there. Turns out that Connor kicked Poirier in the legs and Poirier checked it properly because he knew Connor would, he assumed Connor would kick, he predicted Connor would kick 
uh, leg kick in this fight, and he decided to work on, I guess, you know, work on checking the leg, leg kicks, and he checked it properly, and it was seen in the replays that when Connor kicked Poirier, Poirier checked it properly, and then he, Poirier points at Connor's leg like, ah, that hurt. And perhaps that's what caused the break. Or what caused the break is in before Connor was knocked down the last time. It wasn't actually a knockdown, but we'll get to that. Connor kicks Poirier's um, kicks Poirier's uh, elbow. Connor went for a left kick and then kicked Poirier's elbow, and that what that's what might have snapped his tibia, his shin bone. Uh, but we don't know. But we, what we do know is actually Poirier did not land a punch for Connor to be knocked down. Connor actually misstepped on the foot breaking it even worse and that's what caused him to sit down and for Poirier to come and wheel on him to finish off the round and man Connor just he was he was just sitting there bleeding yelling like no doctor stop it you was you didn't beat me and whatever and Poirier is just there basking in his win enjoyed his win and and he even talked about mentioned in his post fight interview he was like yeah he was hooking my gloves he was cheating this guy's a dirtbag and uh, yeah, and then Connor's true colors just came out that night. He, when it was his turn to get interviewed, he just kept mock, you know, uh, kept insulting and saying, you know, horrible things like, your, you know, what your wife's in my DMs and I'm gonna kill you in your sleep and things like that, and pointing, you know, with a gun and so weird, and even uh, insult Dustin's kids. I don't even know what this guy is doing, but that's his true colors, by the way, guys. Those were his true colors. That's Conor McGregor. I have no idea how people are fans of this guy. But thankfully, you know, people are get, starting to get, you know, uh, become aware of who he really is. This dirtbag that he is. He's not a good person. And uh, the things that he's saying, at least, are not good. It's so weird. And um, Habib, was, Habib knew that. And he can expose uh, that in the Conor fight. In his fight with Conor. But then Conor goes on to expose himself even more. And this is where kind of like the quote comes in. If you're not humble in this world, the world will force humbleness upon you. I was um, thinking about this quote. It's like, hmm, okay, that's interesting. Because that's what happened here. Because this quote rang in my head after I watched the fight. I remember reading this quote a while back. And this quote kind of just rang in my head. Like, yeah, Connor was not humble. Oh, by the way, and this is Mike Tyson speaking from life experience. He had his own, you know, issues with ego. And he got humbled. And now he's... Now it's obvious that Connor is going through the same thing. He was making fun of Dustin, saying that he was going to go out on a stretcher, and now Connor's going out on a, a stretcher away from the you know arena. And man, it's just uh, sorry that I'm scratching my nose a lot. It's just getting itchy for some reason. Uh, and uh, Connor's just you know going full on, no holds barred, you know, saying the worst things that he could possibly say, and uh, yeah, uh, worst things he could possibly say while still trying to be within the fans. Uh, you know, liking, you know, he won't say anything worse than, you know, he's trying to say things that are going to hype up the fight, but he knows there are some red lines that he won't cross. And his red lines are not where morality and honor, you know, ha show a red line. No, his red line is where the fans would stop liking him. And now the fans are just trying, um, you know, becoming more aware of who he really is and who the dirtbag that he is really, as Dustin said. So, yeah. The story is Dustin wins and Dustin is getting a title shot. And man, Dustin versus Oliveira, that's an interesting fight to make. Oh boy, I can't wait for that fight. It's going to be so cool. What? It's been 23 minutes? Dude, I, was, I wasn't planning on only taking, talking about this. Uh, but hey, time goes by when you're having fun, I guess. I'm just enjoying myself. Enjoying my time right here just talking to you guys and dis discussing something that I really like to watch. And man, what the events of, you know, um, Sunday morning for me, because, you know, it's not Saturday night, it's Sunday morning for me here in the UAE watching the fights. It was just something else. It was really interesting, really interesting to watch. So, yeah, Pori is going on to get the title shot. He deserves that. And Connor saying that there should be a fourth fight. And guess who else is saying there should be a, four, a fourth fight? No, none other than Dana White himself. Oh, man. When Habib called Dana, uh, Connor Dana's boy, he's right. Because Dana will just facilitate anything for Connor. Oh, my God. Oh, and by the way, Habib actually had an awesome interview where he talks about, where uh, you know, an ESPN interview where he just, you know, goes for 30 minutes, discusses, you know, his thoughts on the fight, his thoughts on the future of the lightweight division, 
his thoughts on Islam Makhachev, who's actually who actually fought, you know, um, this weekend. Um, I'm filming this after his, after the fight because I'm filming this a bit late. It's gonna be posted a bit late. I know it's a bit late. I'm sorry for that. I'm just trying to, you know, um, get this uh, uh, do this right now, even though it's a bit late. I watched the fight of Islam, and uh, after that, you know, and after I'm right after right now, I'm actually doing this, um, and uh, doing the the podcast so yeah Habib was just talking about all sorts of things in the interview and man the more I listen to this guy the more I respect admire and love him he's just he's just you know just amazing I admire this guy so much I I hold him in such high esteem one of the people I respect the most in this world in our time right now mashallah Allahumma barik Allah yahfala uh, God protect him and God bless him. So, yeah, he talked about uh, how he talked about the Conor Poirier fight and how Poirier deserves to be to go on to fight for the belt and uh, how Conor, as kind of like I said, you know, he will be. Of course, he was humbled because that's the way of the world works. God will humble you if you step out of line that way, and that's exactly what we saw happen. Conor broke his foot, and Conor, as Habib says, he's done with the elite competition at what a lightweight he's not going to see a uh, you know a title ever again he's not going to be able to beat the top contenders he's out for at least a year from a break like that and he's not going to be able to compete anymore with the top you know uh top contenders at lightweight he's going to be he's going to have to now you know reassess what he wants to do because he's not going to get the belt anymore but Connor is a bit too delusional to let that stop him so yeah let's see what happens i really hope connor just uh, sits back assesses where he is in life and just starts thinking about you know uh you know what he could do you know how to become a better person essentially you know the funny thing is connor should have stopped after the floyd fight after he fought floyd mayweather he should have stopped and you know just basked in the money that he made and the success that he has and went on to other projects but no, it's his ego that brought him back to the UFC and that he wants to fight again, even though he's not, you know, one of one of the best anymore. He's not, you know, the guy to beat, to become ch- world champion. No, now it was Habib. It was Habib's time. Conor was able to, was gifted the title shot before Habib, even in a way that screwed over Habib. But now Habib is back and he... T- but now Habib is, has the title, and Connor had to try to fight him and take it from him, but he couldn't, because Habib is Habib. And uh, then he tried then he tried to come back against Don Cerrone. Pfft, that fight just happened, and we forgot about it, I guess. And then, because it wasn't important, really, for the lightweight uh, contention, you know. It's, Cerrone's not a top guy now. Uh, then he fought Poirier and got knocked down, and then fought Poirier again and broke his leg. He shouldn't have come back after the Floyd fight, but hey, it's his ego that brought him back. And it's his ego that forced him, you know, to the position that he is now. He can't even stand. He can't even stand. He had to get surgery, fix his leg. So yeah, that's how it is, uh, what's going on right now. And speaking of the future of the lightweight division, because, you know, we said that Connor cannot compete in it. The person who's the surging prospect right now is Islam Makhachev. Islam just fought just now. I saw the fight, you know. Habib was there uh, cornering him uh, with Javier Mendez and everyone, you know, the AKA team. And uh, yeah, Habib um, was there cornering him, giving advice between, uh, between uh, rounds. And Islam went on to get the win. His first five round fight and he wins in the fourth round by submission. How can you deny this guy a fight in the top 10? He's a top 10 contender who's having to prove that he's a top 10 contender. Give him a guy in the top 10 or give him a guy in the top 5. Islam actually called out RDA. That's the fight to make now. RDA versus Islam and whoever wins gets a top 5, cont- uh, you know, gets to fight someone in the top 5. That's a good fight to make. But man, this is weird now. Because, you know, uh, what's what was weird about this fight actually is that Islam, you know, had a lot of difficulty in the fight and had a lot of opposition. But he was in control most of the time. He won every single round. But... It wasn't as, you know, dominant as we, was, we were hoping it to be. For example, he fought against, Islam fought against Drew Dober. He was much more dominant than here. But, hey, he did get the finish. He was, he was you know, the person who was dominating, but not necessarily the very 
you know, dominant, crazy dominant sheer force that, uh, for example, Habib was. But hey, I'm comparing him to Habib. Let's see what Islam does as Islam. We can't just keep comparing him to others. Let's see what he does. He got the finish, which is great. And he saw his fourth round and his post-fight interview. He was like, man, this is the first fourth uh, five-round fight I was in. And this is the first time I see uh, anything beyond the third round. And I got the finish. And now I want to fight RDA. Let's see what happens there. I'm really excited to see what's, uh, what the, hu- the future holds for them, you know, for these guys. Uh, RDA and Islam. I hope uh, Islam does get to fight RDA and win and go on to fight for the title. Anyway, so... Uh, that's it for that really this was the Kind of Life Podcast by yours truly Muhammad Abdullah I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you come back for more and once again if you're not humble in this world then the world will throw humbleness upon you see you guys in the next one peace